Deputies raise questions after Osceola County Sheriff approves $1,000 bonuses for civilian employees. This is August of 2021. Osceola County Sheriff's Office has approved giving most civilian employees $1,000 checks after Governor Ron DeSantis gave $1,000 checks to first responders and teachers. Now Osceola County Sheriff Marco Lopez is giving most of his civilian, civilian employees checks out of his own budget. That cost in just one, that one department is $240,000, and not everyone is happy about it. Lopez approved that money, but said this week there was no money for body cameras or school resource officers. This guy's a dick, which were also estimated to cost $240,000. When pressed by Channel 9 reporter Shannon Butler, he said the issue with the SRO body cameras wasn't about money, but the fact that he doesn't think they're needed. He said the support staff also risk exposure, so they should be compensated just the same as deputies. And if the state wouldn't do it, he would. Lopez said he has an $85 million budget and had the money to help the employees. Deputies raised questions saying they received the money because they were responding to calls risking exposure to COVID-19 while many people were sent home to work. But the sheriff's office said those who worked from home got smaller bonuses and the $1,000 checks went to those who came in the office. Lopez said the money is coming out of his general fund, which means Osceola County taxpayers footed the bill. So his own deputies were questioning him. And then here's another story. He's accused of violating the Constitution in this one. Let's open this one up. Osceola County Sheriff accused of violating Constitution in new lawsuit. Osceola County Sheriff Marcos Lopez is accused of establishing a violent policing culture. That's alleged in a lawsuit just filed against him and two sheriff's deputies after a deadly encounter at Target last year. The lawsuit is in response to one particular incident, but in it, Sheriff Lopez is accused of fostering a, quote, agency-wide culture of escalating minor criminal offenses into violent and deadly scenes. We think that the actions of the Osceola County Sheriff's Office through the policies, procedures, and practices of Sheriff Lopez are outrageous, dangerous, and beyond reckless. In April of 2022, the Osceola County Sheriff's Office deputies were conducting training exercises at a Target. They were notified about a group of teenagers who the lawsuit says stole about $40 worth of Pokemon cards and pizza. Instead of arresting them on the spot, the lawsuit accuses the sheriff's office of using them as human guinea pigs. The lawsuit will ultimately seek millions, and that's simply because of this ongoing, these ongoing violations, which we believe, as it's been alleged, are civil rights and constitutional violations. Surveillance video shows the deputies in unmarked cars blocking a car with four teens inside. They tried to drive off and the deputies opened fire. Oh, <gasps> what? They stole $40 of Pokemon cards and pizzas and they shot at them? Oh my God. Oh my God. Jaden Baez, 20, the driver was killed. His father is joining the lawsuit on his behalf. I will never be a grandfather ever, said Alejandro Baez, Jaden's father. Lawyers say 19-year-old Joseph Lowe put his hands up to surrender and wound up being shot in both hands and losing a finger. Michael Gomez, 18, was shot in the back multiple times and still has a bullet lodged in his shoulder. The lawsuit claims 17-year-old Ian Joy was slammed to the ground and injured. He wasn't charged with any crime. Lowe and Gomez were charged with petty theft. That's a second-degree misdemeanor, the lowest punishment on record. <gasps> wow. The Osceola County Sheriff's Office told Fox 35 in a statement they weren't surprised by the lawsuit, saying, quote, it was announced the individuals who damaged several police cars caused injury to one deputy and placed several other deputies in fear for their lives would be suing the Osceola County Sheriff's Office. We look forward to the facts being told in a court of law. 
The deputies rammed his vehicle. And this is their lawyer. So for them to twist this, you know, we just wanted the truth. We want the facts. Former state attorney Monique Worrell confirmed she's been investigating the Osceola County Sheriff before she was removed from her position. Now her replacement is taking over that investigation. State Attorney Andrew Bain has a policy that if a law enforcement officer's use of force goes to court, it'll be heard by a grand jury. That means that the sheriff and the deputies named could not only have to pay damages, but could face criminal charges. What the fuck? I am, I'm in utter shock right now. Shining the light on unsolved crimes. No human being deserves. Hold on, this is an ad. I am in utter shock. <laughs> wow. Hold on, let's watch this video on this. A Fox 35 update now. This deadly deputy involved shooting outside of Target last year is leading to a lawsuit against a sheriff. Osceola County Sheriff Marco Lopez is being accused of establishing a violent policing culture. Fox 35's Marie Edinger has reaction from both sides. Sheriff Marco Lopez was scheduled to be at an event near this railroad today. That was set up for 430. He had not responded to interview requests earlier in the day, so we hope to talk with him here, but he wound up canceling last minute, so we didn't get that opportunity. <gasps> the lawsuit is in response to one particular incident, but wow. in it, Sheriff Marcos Lopez is accused of fostering a, quote, agency-wide culture of escalating minor criminal offenses into violent and deadly scenes. We think that the actions of the Osceola County Sheriff's Office through the policies, procedures, and practices of Sheriff Lopez are outrageous, dangerous, and uh, beyond reckless. In April of 2022, Osceola County Sheriff's deputies were conducting training exercises at a Target. They were notified about a group of teenagers who the lawsuit says stole about $40 worth of Pokemon cards and pizza. Instead of arresting them on the spot, the lawsuit accuses the Sheriff's Office of using them as human guinea pigs. The lawsuit will ultimately seek millions, and that's simply because of this ongoing, these ongoing violations, which we believe, as, as it's been alleged, are civil rights and constitutional violations. Surveillance video shows the deputies in unmarked cars blocking in a car with four teens inside. As the teens try to drive off, the deputies opened fire. 20-year-old Jaden Bays, the driver, was killed. His father is joining the lawsuit on his behalf. I will never be a grandfather. Lawyers say 19-year-old Joseph Lowe put his hands up to surrender and wound up being shot in both hands and losing a finger. 18-year-old Michael Gomez was shot in the back multiple times. A 17-year-old was slammed to the ground and says he was injured. The lawsuit claims widespread and persistent policy, practice, culture, and procedures of the Osceola County Sheriff's Office allowed such a deadly and violent event to occur. The Osceola County Sheriff's Office told Fox 35 in a statement they weren't surprised by the lawsuit, saying, quote, it was announced to the individuals who damaged several police cars, Thanks, caused cricket. injury to one deputy, and placed several other deputies in fear for their lives would be suing the Osceola County Sheriff's office. We look forward to the facts being told in a court of law. The deputies rammed his vehicle. It, it's just, it's there. So, so for them to twist this, uh, you know, we just want the truth. We just want the facts. Well, let's see what happened with this lawsuit. Federal lawsuit. I don't know. I'll have to maybe look it up later, but let's see if we can find anything just off the cuff. Target Osceola County Sheriff says they were sued, lawsuit filed. Look at this. Oh man, y'all are going to be pissed off. You're going to be so mad. You're going to be so freaking mad. Look. It says Osceola County. Shit. Hold on. Wait for it. Osceola County Sheriff praises the grand jury decision not to charge deputies in the target shooting. Choo choo, they were there for a for an um practice detail. Ended up killing a teen for taking Pokemon cards. You all want to hear his, his comment? 
this cocky some bitch. Above the law. County Sheriff Marcos Lopez praising the grand jury decision to not bring charges against the two deputies involved in a shooting at a local target, which killed one man and injured two others. However, the state attorney said the grand jury is still not done investigating the case. News Six's Ezzy Castro spoke with Sheriff Lopez about what this means for his office. Hopefully, the decision of the grand jurors will help those affected gain closure and begin the healing process. Because law enforcement officers place themselves in dangerous situations daily. Osceola County Sheriff Marcos Lopez weighing in on the decision from a grand jury that two of his deputies will not face any charges for opening fire on three men, killing one of them outside this target in 2022. Lopez said his deputies shot at the men, accused of stealing from the store, then trying to flee from the scene in a car. There has been a narrative suggesting that these deputies use force because of a petty theft. That's not accurate and that's not You're factual. a liar. The case was the first to be reviewed since state attorney Andrew Bain announced a new policy surrounding the use of force involving officers. I let you know uh, that it was going to be the first case that was going to be part of the uh, new policy once we have was we instituted it back three months ago. Something else that the sheriff said was that he is requesting more body cameras for his deputies, saying that this will bring more transparency for future cases. The attorney that has represented these families has been incredibly, you know, saying, criticizing you because of this case, saying mm -hmm. there was lack of transparency and wants to review these policies. As we know, the grand jury will be reviewing more of these policies. What are your comments towards that? Yeah, remember, Jane is an attorney and he's working on the civil side of it. Um, a lot of these attorneys are gonna profit from deputies being found at fault or negligent. In mm -hmm. this case, we were clear, so it kind of puts his uh, fear and everything into a different direction. In Osceola County, as he Castro getting results, you six. Okay, so I mean, regardless of how old they were, it was petty. It was petty theft. It was forty dollars. It was forty bucks. Right. We should not expect to get shot at over forty bucks, whether we're twenty, sixty, ninety. Unbelievable! This corruption goes deep, guys. Here's another that and this was just January of 2024. He was just off the hook in January. Now he's back on the hook. I mean, we can really see the um, pattern here with this guy. Here is the actual target video. April 2023. After this ad, that is. I know it is totally unreal. It's unacceptable. It's disgusting. And, and I haven't even looked for this. This is just something that, you know, just a simple Google search found all of this while we were live. against the Osceola County Sheriff and two deputies in response to a shooting outside of a busy target last year. One person died and two others were hurt. News 6's Catherine Silver has the details. Surveillance video shows law enforcement surrounding a car in this Target parking lot and ultimately opening fire in April 2022. 20-year-old Jaden Baez was killed and two others were hurt over an alleged theft of Pokemon cards and pizza. They put these young men in a volley of, in exchange of fire. It, 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 I've never seen anything like that in all the decades I've been practicing. Attorney Mark Nijam is representing the men and Sorry, their family. Sorry, I thought that was the actual Target video. Look at, there's the guy from Orange County, the one that did the press conference for Madeline on the left. The sheriff said a lot of his office's policies could use improvement, and there have been changes made since the target shooting. Lopez said the department has made changes to a box technique used and will upgrade request additional body cameras. According to the sheriff's office, several deputies attended a training near the target the night of the shooting. Two detectives were in the Target parking lot and noticed suspicious behavior. A black Audi caught their attention because they noticed the vehicle's license plate was concealed by a piece of paper. 
Lopez said after seeing the suspicious behavior, training was concluded and deputies were told to gear up and head to the Audi where the four men were, though none of the deputies involved were in the shooting were equipped with body cams. According to Lopez, this is because deputies wear tactical gear during training, while body cams are typically given to patrolling deputies. Here's this kid. Let's see what this is about. Ed, check. Ooh, that's loud AF. A developing story in Osceola County tonight. Newly released court documents show theft charges were dropped against two men hurt in a deputy shooting outside a Target store. Yeah, it's a major update to the confrontation that also left one man dead back in April near the store on Highway 192. So News Six's Lauren Cervantes joins us now live outside the Osceola County Sheriff's Office. Lauren, you tried to speak to the sheriff about this update, right? I did. I came here to get reaction from Sheriff Lopez after the state attorney's office says the charges were dropped. But I was told the sheriff is not here and will not be releasing a statement until he himself confirms what we have already confirmed. Now, here's what the no information notice that was filed today says for both Joseph Lowe and Michael Gomez. The documents read in part, quote, from the investigation which has been made, it is the opinion of the writer that this case is not suitable for prosecution meaning the petty theft charges for both Lowe and Gomez have been dropped. Now, I want to take you back to the scene. Surveillance video showed deputies surrounding the men's black Audi, which deputies say was suspicious because there was paper over the license plate. According to an affidavit, it says the deputies tried to make contact with the men, which ultimately led to two deputies opening fire. All of this after deputies say the men stole Pokemon cards and a pizza from the Target. Now, the shooting killed 20-year-old Jaden Baez. The attorneys for Baez's family, Mark Nijam and Albert Yonfa, say Baez was the driver of the Audi. Sheriff Lopez telling us after Baez was taken out of the car, a loaded gun was found that Baez did not have a license for. Now, Nijam and Yonfa are also representing both Lowe and Gomez, sharing this video of Lowe in the hospital. The attorneys say that the young men were also hurt in the shooting and that Lowe was shot six times predominantly in his hands and Gomez three times in the back. A fourth person was also in the car but was a juvenile and has not been named. It's not clear where they fall in the investigation. But I spoke with attorney Yonfa just moments ago. Take a listen. And, and think about this too. A juvenile was in the car. And now that juvenile saw these people get shot to death, people that they were probably friends with, it's hard enough to see a stranger get shot to death in front of you and probably had their blood all over them. Fuck these guys, man. This is awful. The ones that survived will never be the same. They just managed to make their lives that much worse and then end the life of another one. Over Pokemon cards and some paper on the license plate? How about you let them drive off and pull them over like normal cops? Sketchy as fuck. Listen to what Hate he had it. to say. For the family, a, a little bit of a, a good news, uh, considering what they've been through. It, it, it's it's a little bit of a beam of sunlight through these dark clouds that they're going through. You know, again, unfortunately, these boys are still suffering greatly from their injuries mm -hmm. externally and internally. Now, FDLA, who is FDLE rather, who is still investigating the deputy involved shooting, tells us that their investigation is ongoing. After they have concluded that, they will send a report to the state attorney's office to determine if any charges will be brought. For now, in Osceola County, I'm of course not. Um, these guys didn't even know that they stole Pokemon cards. They just went after them because they thought they looked suspicious. And that's not right either. So here's another problem that Marcos had back in March of 2023. Florida State's attorney refutes Osceola Sheriff's drug trafficking claims. This is the old attorney. She was removed from her position. Here's him. And look at how that guy behind him is looking at him. Look at that. Oh, you guys, hang on. Let me fix this. Look at how he's looking at Lopez. Oh, buddy. Okay, so here we have the Florida State's attorney, the former. It says Osceola County Sheriff Marco Lopez held a news conference last week saying out of all the drug trafficking arrests made in 2022, 
None of the offenders were prosecuted for drug trafficking. On Monday, State Attorney Monique Worrell held a news conference and claimed that his comments were misleading. She says 13 drug trafficking cases resulted in a minimum mandatory or higher sentence in 2022. So he was, uh, there's not much to that, but he was going after this, <sighs> this state's attorney. Oh my God. Here's another one on him. This guy needs to go, man. Look at this. Florida deputy arrested after telling friend, oh, oh, hells no. Mm-mm. What? You guys, this just got tinfoil hat level. Everybody put on your tinfoil hats. This just got crazy. I don't like it. No, 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 no. This isn't good. Florida deputy arrested after telling friend accused of having sex with minor to flee, Osceola Sheriff says. Hi, Kina. Mm-mm-mm. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. This isn't good. This is just last June. Arturo Dominguez. <sighs> Deputy told friend with warrant to flee. Oh, my God. We're going to watch the video and then we'll read through this. I'm, I'm in utter shock right now. Utter shock. Never expected to find all deputy this. Now on the other side of the law, he's accused of helping a friend who was wanted for allegedly having sex with a minor. Fox 35's Valerie Boys in Osceola County with more tonight. When an Osceola deputy showed up here at Chero's headquarters, he was arrested, accused of helping a friend who was allegedly sleeping with a minor. The former deputy Dominguez was fired from my agency and arrested. 30-year-old Arturo Dominguez was an Osceola patrol deputy, but now Sheriff Marcos Lopez says he's in big trouble. He told a suspect in a sex case involving a minor to flee. That's pretty disgusting. That's pretty sick. Sheriff Lopez says Dominguez was trying to help a childhood friend named Omar Ayala by using a database to see if there was a warrant out for Ayala's arrest. According to an Okeechobee Sheriff's warrant, Ayala, who's a teacher and a soccer coach, had... A teacher and a soccer coach. This is awful. Sex with a 16-year-old student from Okeechobee High. He wanted to give his friend a heads up so y'all would know if the police were looking for him. He knew that warrants were coming. We talked to the Okeechobee Sheriff about Dominguez helping Ayala. How much more difficult did he make this? Oh, extremely difficult. And, you know, and it's even, you know it, it even points the finger more so, you know, if he had any potential to defend himself or to speak up for himself, his actions now speak volumes. This isn't the first time an Osceola deputy is in trouble with the law. Last week, State Attorney Monique Worrell charged Osceola Deputy David Crawford for negligence with a personal injury. Investigators say a motorcyclist he was following was set on fire at a gas <gasps> station after the deputy's taser came in contact with the gas that pulled beneath the man. <gasps> oh, my God. Y'all. This is terrible. I mean, when you take into a into account you've seen worse i mean just the madeline soto leak is is bad enough it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse so cricket let's see if he gets voted back in this year we'll see we'll see if if this election is rigged or not because who the hell would vote him in 
Taliban as they fought. We actually sent that charge forward. In both cases, we found deputies guilty. The Okeechobee Warren states the victim's mother contacted deputies after seeing text messages about Ayala and another school employee who allegedly had sex with her daughter. Because of Dominguez's conduct, Omar Ayala's whereabouts are now unknown. Do you think there's other victims out there by this man? They can't find him? I, I would hope not, um, you know, but I don't know. Again, Ayala is still on the loose. Meanwhile, Dominguez, he's out of jail on a $6,000 bond. Reporting in Kissimmee, Valerie Boy, Fox 35 News. Did they ever find him? And this dude, whatever happened to Arturo? Dominguez. Oh, God. I'm deeply connected to my family's history and culture, and that's why I love living. He got jail time. He got 60 days. Sixty days in jail after warning a child sex suspect of an arrest warrant. He got he pled guilty to charges of official misconduct and accessory after the fact. Lifelong childhood friend. What does that say about him? Oh, three years probation. So he's currently on probation somewhere out there in Florida. Wow, 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 wow. This is crazy. Did they ever find the other guy? Who's the other guy? Omar Ayla. A detective noticed that he had repeatedly run his name in the system and Dominguez lied and said he ran his name because he pulled the guy over on a traffic stop. Well, good for them for, you know, digging into his searches. I wonder if they... ever caught him. I don't see anything about that. That is nuts. That is the worst of the worst. They tasered a guy while he pumped gas. Uh. What is this? Ooh, it even made TMZ, you guys. This dude is not going to get elected. <laughs> I love it. Look, sheriff posts possible crime, crime scene photo on IG, apologizes and cites incident. This made TMZ. I hope they continue to update because this is from March. But anyways, we're going to wrap it up on that note, guys. Thank you for listening today. Yeah, the guy died. The guy died, guys. Yeah. Um, if you want to join me tonight, we are going to be live in Discord at 8 p.m. Eastern. We're going to be streaming Seth Rogers' channel with Joe Petito. I don't know what that's all about. But if you're not a member of Discord, all you have to do is be a member of the channel or a Patreon member. And you can join us in the live lounge. We're going to be live tonight. So join us for that, Seth and Joe Petito and Dick Talk Tony. I don't know. We'll find out. So hopefully I'll see you guys in Discord tonight. If not, I'll see you on.